Uh, thank you. So yes, uh, so I'm uh, Andrew Marini. I am a uh, developer advocate here at uh, Google. My name is not Google, as it says on your uh, program. Um, although I guess it actually would be a pretty badass thing to have, though, right? Hey, I'm Google. Perhaps I'll watch it just only Google. Uh, anyway, so yeah, so I'm a developer advocate. Uh, I'm on uh, Chrome Package Apps, extensions, Chrome Web Store. Uh, so that's my particular space. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Uh, just before I get started, I always ask these questions. How many people are using Chrome today? Wow, I'm using Chrome. Awesome, great. Uh, those of you who are using Chrome, how many of you have gone to the Chrome Web Store to get like extensions or stuff? Oh, great, cool. everybody. Awesome, great. Thank you. Um, so, why? What are package apps? What are we doing at Google on package apps? You know, before I actually go into the slides, it's, it's usually better just to give demos because I find demos, uh, you know. Make things pretty clear. So before I show the demos, has anyone heard of Chrome Package Apps? Okay, we lost a few, but okay, good. About maybe a third of you. So Package Apps are um, something that we're working on with Chrome Team. Basically, it allows you to build native applications uh, using HTML5. Kind of like phone app, right? Kind of a similar thing. So what we're doing is we're we're building a set of APIs, and we're taking Chrome, and we're separating out the part of Chrome that's the browser from the part of Chrome that's the runtime, right? So you can now treat Chrome as a runtime just like you would treat you know, .NET, Java, Objective-C, right, as a runtime. So you build applications out of HTML5 and they run natively out of the box on Mac, Windows, Linux, and Chrome OS. And I'm going to let Michael, uh, he's going to follow me, he's going to talk about what we're doing to get the Chrome package apps APIs into the Cordova project. And so we'll get uh, package apps onto uh, mobile uh, Android and iOS to start with via the Cordova system. So that's that's what package apps are. So let me show you a quick demo. Um, these are package apps. What I'm doing here is I'm using the Chrome app launcher. Uh, if you've ever used a Chrome before, you've probably seen this. Um, right now, this is the way it works on the Mac. The, the vision is not to have it you know, be required. You'll be able to treat package apps just like any other native app. They'll go in your dock, they'll go in the apps folder. On Windows, they'll go in the start menu. On Windows 8, they'll go into the, I guess, start menu, that they may back out. So this is uh, The Economist. So The Economist um, uh, built a package app for their, uh, for their magazine. And as you can see, it looks just like an app, right? There's no URL bar, there's no back and forward button, right? I get, uh, you know, I can navigate through my, um, uh, through my magazine. So I click on the story, I get nice keyboard navigation. Um, if you're a sharp eye reader, you probably noticed that here on the home page it says available to read offline. Uh, this is one of the hallmarks of package apps, is that they run offline by default. I'll get to that in a few more detail in just a minute. Um, but you can see, if I didn't tell you that this was built in HTML5, right, you, you probably wouldn't be able to tell. I mean, this, and this app looks the same way on other OSs, like Windows and so on. I mean, it looks more native, like the title bar looks like a Windows title bar, but for the most part, it's just the same UI. Uh, another good example, how many people have heard of 500 pixels before? Yeah, a lot of you. So 500 pixels, you know, it's a professional photo browser application. Again, you can see these guys have built a package app. It's a nice, rich, immersive UI, right? They can you know, go into photos and scroll through them and such. Uh, let's see, maybe one more example. Um, here's an app uh, called Liffy. Um, if you've ever seen Visio before, this is basically uh, an HTML5 based you know, diagramming app. So again, you know, I'm getting a nice native experience. All built in HTML5, right? Runs on four OS is just out of the box. Okay. So back to my okay. So now the question of course becomes why would you want to do this? Um, well, you know, web apps are great, right? We're, we're Google, we love the web. Right, web apps have a lot of advantages, right? They run across platform. Uh, you know, you, you build them using one one code language, HTML, JavaScript, and so on. So I think we all agree that web apps are really great. The problem is that there comes a time when web apps are decided not so great. Right? So I think I'm sure we've all seen this experience before. You're on a plane or you're you don't have a, a connection, or you have a spotty connection. Uh, you know, and so the user gets presented with a nice big white never screen saying, oh, no network. Um, what about games? Games are great too, right? You have a nice experience on the web, you've got, you know, uh, full keyboard, mouse. The problem is, games, games suddenly you know, aren't so great, 
on the website. So what we're doing is we're building packages that to solve a variety of problems. So the first problem is that they run offline by default. So you build your package app, you package all your assets locally, all your JavaScript, all your HTML, all your CSS code, it all gets put into a package that's then downloaded and installed onto the user computer. Uh, they, we also give you access to the platform capabilities and the hardware. So because it's HTML5, we rely on HTML5 wherever it provides a solution, things like reading files or you know, anything that HTML5 can do. But there are some things HTML5 doesn't, doesn't provide, so we're filling those in with uh, Chrome API that you can use to leverage certain features. Um, so for example, if you use Chrome, you probably notice like if you use Chrome on more than one computer, or you're signed in, you sync your bookmarks and your history and stuff like that, right? Well, as a Chrome package app, you can just leverage that syncing feature using just a couple of lines of code, okay? So there's APIs like that that we can kind of provide, right? um, As I just showed you, they give you a nice, rich, immersive UX, so you know, there's no URL bar, there's no back forward button, it's just your app uh, in the user. Um, and uh, we'll distribute these via the Chrome Web Store on desktop. So for the Mac, Windows, uh, Linux, Chrome OS solution, that's the Chrome Web Store. But because we're using Cordova to get to the mobile platforms, it'll be native app stores uh, is, is, the, is the distribution mechanism. So it's not really complicated to build one of these things. You just build your web app like you normally would. You've got your HTML, you've got your JavaScript, and so on. All we, all we ask you to do is wrap a little bit of infrastructure around it. So you make a manifest file, it's JSON code. It basically describes like, what the app name is, and what permissions it has, and so on and so forth, right? So that all gets packaged up, and then you put that in the store, and then when the user goes to install it, this is what controls what the app is doing. So uh, let me just quickly jump over to the browser and show you. Like, so we have a, a Git repo. So if you want to play with this stuff, you can, you can play with it today. We're in developer preview right now. We're going to launch this platform 1.0 platform next month, probably like late next month. So now's a great time to start investigating this stuff. We have the repo here, and I'll just show you a quick Hello World example. So um, let's see, there we go. Okay. So this is the Hello World example. The index HTML is exactly what we expect it to be. It's just HTML code. Where things get interesting is, you know, this is the manifest. So here's a very simple example of the manifest, right? So it explains the name, what the app version is. Um, this is how updates are controlled, for example. You, you bump the update number, uh, the version number, and then the Chrome Web Store just handles the pushing out updates, just like we push out updates to Chrome every day. Um, down here, it describes where the entry point to my, to my app is, and that's my main JS file. That's this right here, and all this is doing is using our API to listen for when the app is launched. Uh, you know, that, that kind of stuff. Pretty straightforward. Um, if you want to learn more about what package apps are, on our website, developer.chrome.com slash apps. Uh, this explains, it goes through the vision behind uh, package apps. We, the, the way we look at package apps is we want these things to run wherever Chrome runs. So today, that's you know, the four desktop OSs and the two mobile ones that I, I talked about earlier, you know, probably more in the future. Uh, down here, just a, I'm going to point out the link that shows all the Chrome uh, APIs that we support. So things like alarms, you can build real, you know, HTML5 native apps that have alarms now. If, if your app isn't running, you know what the right time is, and, you know, the alarm goes off, your app will actually wake up and do its work. You can take advantage of things like Google Cloud messaging, um, you know, things like that. So I think my time is just about up. Yes? Okay, so, um, okay. So uh, Michael is going to talk a little bit more detail about how to get these things onto uh, the Cordova uh, stuff, and so I'll, I'll hand over to Michael.